Tonight on Connecticut's news station, a weather watch alert as heavy rain moves in Friday. The potential for flash flooding will break it down hour by hour and where the heaviest rain may fall. Five months after a teenager was killed in a stabbing, a mother and son are now charged with manslaughter. The emotional day in court for family and loved ones. Local law enforcement are working around the clock to keep dangerous drugs off the streets. One department's effort to stop the flow of fentanyl. Concerns over Tripoli and mosquitoes. I'm Fox 61's Gabby Molina, and I'll have more on what's being done in the eastern part of the state to address the problem. Fox 61, Connecticut's news station begins with a weather watch alert. And we do begin tonight on the Weather Watch as we prepare for some strong storms to move into the state. Thanks for joining us. I'm Brent Harden. And I'm Samaya Hernandez. With rain comes a risk for significant flash flooding, especially in the western part of our state. Yeah, let's take a look at the radar. You can see that system hovering over Long Island, New York tonight. Let's toss things over to meteorologist Ryan Breton for more. Ryan, uh, what's the timeline looking like for this rain? Brent and Samaya, this is almost going to be an all-day event. The rain will be coming in waves, but it looks like it will be most persistent in western Connecticut. And that's where a flood watch has been issued uh, for Litchfield, New Haven, and Fairfield counties through the day tomorrow and into tomorrow night. Now, in other parts of the state, there will be rain, but probably not quite as heavy as it will be in western areas. We have a few light showers. The developing along the shoreline, but as you saw just a moment ago, the bands of rain really starting to get their act together near and south of Long Island. And this will be pivoting in and then basically stopping somewhere around New York City, the Hudson Valley, or Western Connecticut tomorrow. And underneath that band of rain, there may be some places that get several inches of rain. And that's the concern. So let's go through this hour by hour. Four o'clock in the morning, heavy rain developing, especially in the western half of the state, but still some rain in eastern Connecticut as well. It looks like a wet morning commute just about everywhere with showers and periods of rain, but especially to the west, this band of rain will just continue to pour through much of the morning tomorrow, and then that rain will continue off and on into the afternoon as well. So plan on rain heavy at times through the day. Both commutes will be wet. At times that rain will be coming down quite heavily and the potential is there for more than five inches of rain, especially in western Connecticut, and that's where flash flooding is most likely. We'll break down the storm hour by hour and we'll also look ahead to the weekend, which has some improvements in store. We'll see you in just a bit. Ryan, thank you. New developments tonight in the death of a 17-year-old girl, Danasia Uzzel of New London, back in April. Now, tonight, a man and his mother are behind bars, charged with being an accessory to first-degree manslaughter and strangulation. According to police, Nishan Cherry brought Uzzel home from a party where he and his mother, Erica, got into an angry altercation with the teenager. Their argument led to a stabbing, and Uzzel was allegedly dragged down a staircase by her hair before she died. A relief. Big relief. I want this day to come. And I want them to do time. You know, so you can't do this to anyone's child. You can't. And I don't want to happen to anybody else's child. Now, both cherries are being held on $250,000 bond. Nishan has pleaded not guilty. Erica has yet to enter a plea. Still developing tonight, the search continues for a domestic violence suspect in Manchester. Police are looking for 31-year-old Andrew Davis of <laughs> Bristol. They say he was involved in an armed standoff at a home on Woodbridge Street early this morning. A woman called police saying Davis was inside the home with her boyfriend and children and that she was concerned for their safety. Police were able to get them out before entering the home, but Davis was nowhere to be found. Anyone with information on his whereabouts should contact police. And new at 10 tonight, the weather may be cooling down, but mosquitoes are still out there. That's right, and experts say in eastern Connecticut, they're finding more mosquitoes carrying eastern equine encephalitis, more commonly referred to as triple E. Yeah, Fox 61's Gabby Molina is live outside the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection's headquarters in Hartford now with more. Gabby. Brendan Samaya Deep says that in eastern Connecticut, there's still an elevated risk for triple E. That's why members of the mosquito management program were out in that part of the state today trying to minimize the risk. Though summer is over and fall is here, so are mosquitoes. Because of the wet summer, we have a bumper crop of mosquitoes this year. And in the eastern part of Connecticut, 
experts are finding that more of those mosquitoes are carrying eastern equine encephalitis, a virus also known as triple E. Traditionally, this area is kind of a, a hotbed for triple E when it shows up. It's just the right habitat for those types of mosquitoes that, that like these red maple swamps and sphagnum moss swamps. Thursday, the Department of Energy and Environmental Protection's Mosquito Management Program was spraying Patchogue State Forest in Voluntown in an effort to reduce the risk of the virus spreading. And we're using uh, insecticides that are registered for mosquito control and other pest control. It's uh, designed for a quick knockdown. It doesn't linger, um, quick knockdown of the pests and that's why we want to try to catch them here in the evening while they're still on wing. While the virus has been detected in mosquitoes in more than a dozen towns, there have been no animal or human cases this year. Experts of the Connecticut Agricultural Experiment Station say the virus can be very serious. Triple E actually affects all age groups. It's extremely severe in, in those that are hospitalized. The fatality rate is about, is about one third, about 30%. Which is why even though the end of mosquito season is approaching, it's not quite time to let your guard down. So until we get a good hard frost, if you're out in the woods, hiking, camping, hunting, just enjoying the outdoors, you know, protect yourself against mosquito bites. Um, particularly uh, around the times between dusk and dawn, um, the mosquitoes that transmit these viruses tend to be more active in the evening hours. And experts say that West Nile virus is also still being detected around the state. Coming up on the news at 11, I'll tell you what they say is one big difference between the two viruses. Live in Hartford, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, Gabby, thank you. We have an update now on a deadly jet crash back in 2021. The National Transportation Safety Board says the crash happened because the pilot left the parking brake on during takeoff. The crash happened after the jet took off from Robertson Airport in Plainville. And the report says the jet was going slower than usual as it took off. There was also a lack of electronic equipment on board the jet that would have notified the pilots of the problem. The jet hit a manufacturing building shortly after takeoff and burst into flames. A husband and wife, both of them doctors, and two pilots died in that crash. Well, new tonight, the bank that handles money for Alex Jones' company has cut ties with him. Axos Bank closed the company's account last month. It agreed to reopen the company's account for 30 days after a request by Jones' lawyers, but it will not extend the relationship beyond that. The account held more than $2.5 million at the time it was shut down. And this comes as families of victims of the Sandy Hook shootings are criticizing Jones' spending habits. And they are still seeking the $1.5 billion they won in a lawsuit from him last year. A massive drug bust carried out by Hartford police officers say they recovered enough fentanyl to package more than 44,000 bags of the potentially lethal drug. This happening the same day Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy called on Congress to act to address the nationwide fentanyl crisis. Fox 61's DeAndrea Turner joins us now live from the Hartford Police Department with more on that story. Hi, DeAndrea. Hi, Samaya. Well, Senator Murphy says that gun exchanges and buying guns is a direct relation to the fentanyl crisis and police with boots on the ground here. They say that's true and that's what happened with the latest drug bust. A little over a kilo of fentanyl, 1200 grams of fentanyl was recovered, which is enough to make roughly 40 to 45,000 bags of, of fentanyl, which can be sold on the street. Hartford police found these drugs executing search warrants they obtained during the course of a drug investigation. To put this in perspective, there are a little more than 120,000 people living in Hartford. That would amount to one bag of fentanyl for one in every three people living in the city. But that's not all officers seize during this bust. Guns and drugs go together. They always have. Uh, and they always will. Police also seized multiple guns, including a ghost rifle. Getting the guns off the street is, is very important to you know, the safety of our, of our community. The state health department says that fentanyl is to blame for 86% of all overdose deaths in the state. But elected leaders in our state say that this problem requires looking beyond Connecticut. Fentanyl is a plague in my communities in Connecticut, in my colleagues' communities. Connecticut Senator Chris Murphy took to the Senate floor Wednesday calling on Congress to address the link between the Mexico cartel gun trade with the U.S. to the fentanyl crisis. There is a straight through line between the power of the cartels and the fentanyl trade that is killing American citizens. It is time for the United States to recognize that if we want to do something 
about fentanyl coming into the United States, if we want to save our citizens from ruin, then we have to do something about the guns that move from the United States into Mexico. And Hartford police say since the beginning of 2023, they've seized at least 90 guns here in Hartford. In Hartford, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.